Hi everyone, so today we are going to focus on your Latin roots again. And I know some of you really wanted us to focus on some Latin roots, but we're also going to focus on some prefixes. And this is a little bit tricky in this section. And then we're gonna focus on the in and lots more. So let's go ahead and start with the prefix di. Now it can say di or de, okay? And it's derived, which means it's molding it with Middle English and Old French. And you're gonna see them in uh, Latin and Greek words. So it's also, we have them in the prefix dia. And that's, it's also derived from, from this. So it's forming Greek with the letter I when you're merely adding the A. So that's oftentimes when you're going to get a Greek word, when you have the A on, but not always, but most of the time. So when an A is following it, it can mean through. Can you guys think of an example where it means through? So if, like, if you think about the word diameter, which means through, and it also sometimes means day, and that's derived from Latin. So this can be both, but you'll mostly probably see it really in the Greek form most of the time, but it's really coming from the DI, and then it's followed by the A, okay? So here are some examples of diathermy, diamagnetism, and right here, this means heat, right? Therm means heat. Okay, so how can we identify dia as Greek or Latin? Well, learning your Latin roots make all of the difference to not feel one-sided. So if you're really learning your roots, uh, whether it's your Latin roots or your Greek combining forms where they're Greek words, right? And they're pulled together and they're making one word. If you're really learning those, you're not going to feel like, oh, well, that's just all Greek or that's all Latin. Uh, so, so when you see like the word diagonal right here, gone is Greek. And I think of a large size of sides when I think of diagonal. So it's from side to side right here, you guys. So you think it's diagonal. So you think of large sides, boom, across. It's through the square. See right there? Through it. All right, so the DI forms in both Latin and Greek. So also understanding thoroughly before a vowel is a form of dia. So sometimes this can mean thoroughly. Also, it means the number two, but when it's meaning the number two, it could be dia in Greek. For instance, diphthong. Do you guys know this? Do you guys talk about this when you're playing piano? Oh, so she's talked to me quite a bit about this when we're doing our voice lessons. So this is actually when you have two vowels coming together and it makes a particular sound. So when it's Latin though, you have a part and not. It's Latin when it's making this meaning. So it can have several different meanings depending on what it is. So it really helps you if you can identify your root. So right here, now these are Latin roots. Directive, see here's your prefix, here's your root, and here's your suffix. Does that make sense? See how you can identify this right off the bat. Ooh, well this means either a part or not depending on what it's doing in the word. Dispersal, so also the DI is part of this section. 
So they all come together. They mean the same thing when it's Latin. Okay, so for instance, right here, see how it starts with it? Dispersal, and you have the dis. So we have diversion, or where, depending on where you're at, it could say diversion. Have you guys heard of it both ways? I have. So diverse or diverse, digest, dilate. Another way where you can, it will help you if you're understanding whether it's Latin or Greek, if you can put like a shun on it, like a T-I-O-N or an S-I-O-N, then you know it's going to fit in the Latin family. So, for instance, dilation, dilution, okay? So you, you can actually make a different word by adding on your suffix T-I-O-N or S-I-O-N, and then you also know that it's going to mean either a part or not, and it's going to be Latin. This D-I is going to be Latin, not Greek. Divert. See how you can switch that to diversion? So you know it's either going to be a part or not. So think about this one. What do you guys think? Is it going to, is divert a part or not? It's you're breaking it apart. You're causing a diversion. You're breaking apart what's going on somewhere else. Can you see how that will help you understand the word? Digress, uh, divest or divest. Also, this is dependent on your root. Oftentimes, so dependent for the word, these are, it's dependent. You can't oftentimes just have your Latin root. There are some roots that can stand alone, but most of the time they don't. And you need your prefix with your suffix or with your root. You need your prefix with the root or your root with the suffix, whatever. You need to have both often or most of the time. So. Dependent for the word, Latin words are really easily to identify if you really have studied your prefixes and your Latin roots. Now, I do think that the DI is one of the most confusing because it can be Latin or Greek. And so it's hard to understand, well, really, what is the meaning of the DI? Well, so we have Latin words are easily identified. What do we do? We have our prefix plus our root. Prefix plus root. Prefix plus the root. So if we move over here, see how we talked about dia being day? And see how we talked about the Greek. Is, typically when you see dia, you think it's Greek. But it can also mean day. It's Latin and for the word diary. Isn't that interesting? What do you think about of it as a diary? You write in it daily, right? Sundial, what do you think about for sundial? So it helps you understand the days and it moves as the sun moves, right? And so that's where it tells you where the day is. All right, so die, which we've talked about here, it can mean thoroughly. Now, thoroughly is actually a difficult word to spell. A lot of people get this mixed up, but how I teach my kids how to spell this, Thor. That's what, how you spell Thor. Like the superhero Thor. Thor is thorough. So you always start spelling the word Thor. Thor is thorough. So die means thoroughly, it's Latin. So you guys got this? Diminution, okay? Which means to diminish. But see, look, it starts. This is a Latin word. All right, now, this right here, do you guys remember what the, the path means? Okay, so path means feeling. It is a Greek word. Some examples, we have sympathy, apathy. Do you guys, do you guys know any words? that could go for path, pathological, like a pathological liar, that, that fits in. 
That is the next word I was going to say, a sociopath, right? Empathy, you're having feelings for somebody that you hurt for them, okay? Now, I felt this, you guys, was really fun. Now, when you think of arch or arc, do you know how to pronounce it? How to, what does it mean? Is it, well, is it Greek or is it Latin? Are, are you ever doing that in a word? Archway. Nice. So now, this is spelt, this says arch right here. And it's Latin like the word archway. And this says arc. It's Greek. So when you have the CH and it says K, it's Greek. Like matriarch. And it means to rule. So these have completely different meanings. So for instance, if you have like Latin arch. So this is a really great place. It's Arches National Park. They actually named it after the Latin arch and it is forming. See if you see that it's forming arches. It's absolutely beautiful. It's one of the, it's one of the wonders of the world and I recommend that you take a family trip there. But anyways, like the arch in your foot, the archway in the door, anything that has to do with an arch is Latin, okay? But if it's an arc, it, is, it means rule. So a matriarch is a female so like I would be the matriarch of our home and Richard is the patriarch of our home. Okay. So this is the female. Now pronunciation in the English language mixed with the Latin language. So pronunciation is about 50%. I don't know the exact, but so that's why it's so important for you to understand this because then you're understanding really what that means. So you're gonna like, oh my gosh, I know what this means. So you're gonna understand what this means. Now, if you take arch, boys, it, if you go in and say, well, what does arch mean? Not arc, it's going to mean bow. And there's so many different versions of bow. Can you see that real good? Like bow as in I'm going to bow. To yeah, exactly. Bow. Now. Now that's a bow. Well, yeah. So no matter what, whether it's bow or bow, it's coming from your Latin root arch. So this says bow and it's a weapon for shooting and for like a bow and arrow, like Robin Hood. See how it bows in and you have your string. Can you see that? It's going to bow and you're going to have your string and then your arrow, a bow and arrow. No, 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 no. Yeah. So now this uh, bow is for a stringed instrument, like for a violin or a cello or something like that. Or we have a curved stroke forming letters together. So can you see right here, Daniel? Now, how I, I typically don't write in print, I write in cursive. So this is my name, Lisa. See how you have, these are called bows. So this is, let's say if we wanted to do Daniel, that is not very, very nice. <laughs> it's not a very nice D. So if we do Daniel, See how those right here, all of these curvy loop-de-loos are called bows. And see how they're arching, how these have arches. Boom, they're arching. That is coming from the Latin root. And so it's, so curved strokes forming letters together. That's what that is. Um, also a knot, we have two loops like the bow you would put in a girl's hair. Um, you tie your shoelace in a bow with strings, then you can untie them really easily. 
Also, this bow is spelt a little bit different, and it's a woman's boyfriend, or they're called dandies. But this right here, this is called a bow. But this means the same thing. It is an arch. So if you think about me bowing, see how my body is arching. So it's still falling in this Latin family right there. So bend as a sign of respect. You're bowed to, okay? Or this bow also means a trailer or movie is launched. So it's bowing out, out into the world. Okay, so now back to bow. We have arcus. See how you have arc, um, arch where it comes from? Bow, arrow. So that will help you with the, with the arch, okay? Now, let's go into the word meter. And what do you guys think? Is it Latin or is it Greek? So, okay, we have meter, right, guys? Mm -hmm. So it became a measurement. So it's almost the same size as a yard here in the United States. We go by the imperial system and most other countries go by the metric system, but this is almost, a meter is about this size. So it's just a little bit longer than how we uh, measure, but the United States is moving a little bit with the metric system in the medical field. So it's a measurement, a new unit of length. So it's an actual length that you have or it be, can just be considered a measurement. So it's a system of units. So when you think of, so it made it easier to manage exchanges. So, but in 1983, the word meter was switched to measure light. So that's also how they measure light with the word meter. So it's borrowed and used in prose which is a poetic meter. So when you're counting all of your, you know what prose is? Mm -hmm. What's a prose? Um, it is, oh, I see what you're saying. So pros and cons. But prose like this, sweetie, is actually, it's poetry. Oh. See, poetic. So prose means poetry. Okay, so how they make their sentences, how they do their thing, that's in the metric system. They're me measured in their way of meters. So now anything can be measured. So we have the metric system, which I was talking about, where lots of things are measured in tens and you actually have your actual measurement in the metric system, which is the meter, which that's not a full meter, that is a yard. I don't have a meter. I don't even know if you can buy it here in the United States. I'm sure you can, but I don't know, I've never looked. And meter comes from both origins. So you're both right. Metron for Greek means to measure. Metrum for Latin means to measure. So they've combined them. It just means to measure no matter what, if it's Latin or Greek. So, well, why does that matter? It does matter if you know that because if you look at the word kilometer, oh, so we're actually going to look at size and length. So there is a way to do measurements. So when you look at the actual meter, right here, right here. <laughs> um, it's an actual size, it's an actual length. So if you actually put a number in front of it, it's an actual size, it's an actual length. So, but kilo is Greek. So this would be a Greek word. 
kilometer. Now you have to be really careful when you're at, when you have an O, you want to, maybe people want to say kilometer, but that's not how you say that. Oftentimes this O will say ah, and we don't say kilo. If it's by itself, we say kilo because it's open, but here we're going to close it, kilometer. Centimeter. Now in this one, cent is what? Latin or Greek? Yeah, it does mean a hundred. So this is actually Latin. Latin. So this is a Latin word. Centimeter. Now a centimeter, if you think about the actual meter, cent means a hundred and it's broken up into 100 individual pieces. So if you see the I right here, that is telling you that this number is going to be broken apart. And this meter is the actual measurement. So you have to be careful. If you have a number in front of it, you know you have an actual size or length that matters, that you need to measure it by that. Millimeter, what does mil mean? It means a thousand. So it's the same right here. Like a What's that? But this, yeah, like a millipede. Exactly. So, so Paul said a millipede, which is a bug, right? With lots of legs that looks like they have a thousand legs when they really don't. Like a centipede looks like it has a thousand legs. See how it's broken? I mean, it looks like they have a hundred legs. See how it's broken apart when you have an eye there. So, but mill is Latin, Latin, Greek. So these, these ones are Latin roots. So it, so just so you know that there is a difference but it does mean to measure, whether it's put on Latin or Greek words. So what did we go? We simplified it from these and we just put it in one meaning to measure. And we went to um, meter. Now sometimes it is spelt a little bit different with an RE, depending on just your word. So look at di diameter. This is two metrical feet. See how this R right here, boys, is it's not an ER, but it still is meter. Okay, it means to measure. And that means two in this word. See these, these ones, boys, can be really tricky. Try to read that word down. Algometer, but it's not. It's algometer, algometer. See how you, that M is gonna be over. That happens in so, especially when it has to do with a measurement, but oftentimes it will move over. And algometer, and it changes the accent right there. Okay, this is the accented syllable right here. Algometer, algometer, okay? You guys say it. Algometer. Yeah, algometer. How about this word? Diameter. Diameter. See, it did the same thing here. This is the accented syllable. Diameter. Try this word. Frometer. Interferometer. Interferometer. Spectrometer. Speedometer. Or you could say speedometer. But either way, these are measurements. And these are instruments, okay? Okay, these are US spellings, okay, for metrical. So there are different spellings in different countries than how we spell for meter. So, but it is pretty easy. So we have geo plus meter. Geo means earth. Meter means to measure. Okay, so radio plus meter. Pronounce that word. Radiometer. Radiometer. So radio means array and meter means to measure. Say this word. 
barometer. Barrel means weight. weight and meter means to measure. So any device referring to measurement typically has meter in the word. Okay, see how this has, these are all measuring something. Measurement, it's measurement, measurement. They're measuring things, okay? So now let's look at dis right here. Can you see that really good, Dan? We have dis. And dis typically, in, when, you, when you are looking at it as the Latin root, it typically means a part or not. And, but you have to figure out your word. Now, we, we talked about the di earlier, and it could be the Greek or it could be Latin, and we talked about the different ways, but in this word, I'm gonna have it as the number two. So we, if we have dis in them, like the word disband, dis means a part in this word. So for example, the police did disband after the speech. So dis means a part, so they left, they separated, okay? So di or di, however you, it's used in the word, it means the number two like a uh, diatom. So this, the microscopic diatoms adjust well to change in the ocean. Now, the diatoms, they're little tiny shells that have two shells. Two. That's the reason why we have the number two right here. Okay? So diff, we have to quarrel for this word. What's this word say? Differ. We differ in our opinions about art. So, fur means to carry. So if we look at the word differ, diff means, in this word, what do you think it means? I beg to differ, I beg to differ. okay. So it doesn't mean not or part. So if you look at this, if you know what fur means to carry, diff means a part in this word, and you're coming apart. We're, we're not together on this. Does that make sense? Okay. You're not with each other. You could almost put both of them in here, but I would put it as you are apart. You're not coming together. You're differing. That you, so you're apart. Okay. You're carrying apart from each other. So now infer, in means not or into, infer, okay? Prefer means to carry, right? Pre means before. Transfer, trans means across. Fur means to carry, you're carrying things across, like if you're making a money transfer, you're carrying something across to another bank, or you're transferring um, plants to another area, whatever. It means across, and you're carrying it. Yes. Okay, we're gonna do a quiz. Let's ask the question. Why do you want to learn your grammar? What do you want to le learn your grammar? Daniel. So you don't, so you're not stupid. Oh, I like that. Why do you want to learn your grammar? So you can pronounce words better. So you can pronounce words better. So you can function in society better. If you know your grammar, no matter what, you're going to be able to get better jobs. You're going to function in society better. You're going to understand what people are talking about. You won't be lost in this. So it's really important to do this. Now I do have some difference. It, we have some Greek and we have some Latin roots in our quiz. Volve, Latin or Greek? This is your quiz. Latin. Devolve. D means down. Volve means roll. 
Okay, ology, Latin or Greek? Greek. Oh, I like that, Greek. What did you say? Okay, this actually can Latin. be both. And so, but in this word, biology, see how it says ah? We don't say bioology. We say biology. It means life and study. In this word, we have a Greek word because bio is Greek. Um, so, but it can be both. How about geo, as in geography? Greek. This is Greek. Okay, so, and you know geography, you know this is Greek. Graph is so easy to know if it's Greek or not because of that pH. Okay, Paul, spect. Is it Latin or Greek? Greek. Spect. Oh, Latin. Ah, so as soon as you see the CT, you don't even have to guess. You know it's Latin, spect. Introspect. Intro means inwardly. Spect means to see. So if you see any word with spect in it, you know it has everything to do with seeing something. Sept. Daniel. This is your quiz. So Daniel says Latin. It is Latin. It's a PT. So CTs and PTs, you know. Okay. Intercept. Inter means between, sept means taken. Cent. It is Latin. It stands for 100. Okay? Percentile. So per right here, it means by the hundreds. You're counting by the hundreds. It actually is way back many years ago, per was a contraction. So when you're putting it on here, it was considered a contraction. Well, I thought that was really interesting. So let's go into menu. It's old French. And what do you guys think? It, it's, it is old French, but what else do you think? Where's the origin? With this word, they actually really don't know for sure exactly where it's coming from. Now, how would you, would you say minute, and what other, is the other way to say this? Minute. Minute. So this can say minute or minute, okay? And it means a small measurement. No matter if you're saying minute or minute, it means small. So if you think about a small measurement, if you think about a minute, is that a small... Yeah, a minute in time, is that a small amount of time? Yeah. It's very small measurement. So it does not come with the metric system when we're, we count by tens. So it actually, when I think of how they use the minute system, I personally would put that with the imperial system where, you, where we count in quarts, where we go cups, pints, quarts, and gallons or they use it for the metric. There's no metric system. It started in the 14th century. And by where you count more by 15, half, three quarters, and a whole, okay? So that's how you would break apart your minutes. And they count them in 60s. So they don't, it didn't, did not make sense to count them in tens because 60 minutes is an hour. So they counted them differently. So also minutes means to take notes. So if you've ever been in a meeting and you've been the secretary, you're, it's a small amount, a small measurement of notes. You're meeting minutes. So you're in the meeting, you're asked to take the notes. We're going to look into our chameleon prefixes and these are our Latin prefixes that help you understand your Latin roots better. So in can mean in, into, not. It means different things depending on the word that you're using. So if we say in for the word inscribe, it means on, okay? Scribe means to write. 
Will you inscribe my book? So they're writing on my book and they're putting their signature down. Yes, sweetie. So kind of like um, an autograph in the book. Yes, exactly. You're right. So M means not, like the word imperfect. So if you look at N, see how it is on the S. It goes on lots of roots. But I am, most of the time, it will only go on words that start with P's, M's, and B's. B's, M's, and P's, right? Like important. Yeah, important. Very good. <laughs> so M means what? Not. Not or into. Port means to carry. And so you're carrying something into someplace. If you think about important information, you're carrying it to somebody. Port means to carry, and you're going into somewhere to do it. Okay? Does that make sense? So we have imperfect. The couch was imperfect, so this means not. It's not perfect when we came to look at it. I R ear. When it is a prefix, it says ear. This means not in the word irrelevant. It means not relevant. The comment was irrelevant to the topic. Ooh, look at that. I forgot to put my period on. You have to have a period. Opens with a capitalization and it ends with a period. No, so uh, it opens with, with uh, Capitalization ends with a punctuation mark. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Paul. So, ill, it means in, into, or not, right? Elude. He did elude him into a false sense of security. So, you guys know what elude means? If you think about it, he did elude him into a false sense of security. Um, false. Oh, I love that. It's an illusion. You're deceiving. So when you see this, you're, you're going into and you're deceiving. You're going into something that's, that's showing deception. Okay, so now we're going to look at the subsection of the chameleon prefixes. And you guys remember what sub means? And all of these prefixes. Under, under, under or, below. or below. Excellent. So when you see this, it's going to mean under or below, whichever, you, whichever word you put it with. Okay, so look at suspend. Now remember, we go through this. Bs go on most of the other words. No, Bs go on words that have with Bs. Now, B's, M's, and P's on the other one. This is the unusual one, Paul, because it has a B, M, and a P. So this is a little bit unusual, but in the other chameleons, you would put the M's on anything if the root starts with a B, M, and a P, but this B, M, or a P, but these ones are a little bit different because they actually have those here. Also, they're a little bit different because the S-U-S goes on P's as well as the S-U-P that goes on P's. So it can be a little bit more confusing when you're putting on this prefix onto your Latin roots. But it still works pretty much the same. B's go on B's, M goes on M, S goes on P's, but then you have to decide. C's go on C's, P's go on P's, R's go with R's, F goes with F, G's go with G's, and then the B's go with all of the other letters, all of the other letters in your thing. So let's look at suspend. So see how the S-U-S goes on the P? But you can hear it. When you can hear sus, you, you know you're going to use that. But if you list, listen to this one, suppose. See, this piece silent. We don't say suppose. But see, here you can hear the S. 
but you need to still remember that that is in this section right here. So suggest, summit, submission, subversion. Also right here is unusual. Look at this, submission. We have the S-U-M can go on the ones would start with M and the SUB can also go on one. So you have to be a little bit careful with that and just listen to the word. You know it means under or below, but still it will go on different ones like that. Suspender. So same thing here, it just has a suffix added onto it. Just listen for the sus. We don't say suspender, right? Supply, this is silent. So you know it's not an S-U-S, it's a double P. See, you have one P for the prefix, one P for the root. Success, one C for the prefix and one for the root. Except here, you guys can hear both of these separately. Suck, cess. This is saying s because that is an E-I-R-Y. And this is saying k because that is not an E, I, or Y. Most words that are double, this one is silent, but you have, not always, you're gonna get, you're gonna get things like that. And a lot, oftentimes, your, if it's a prefix, you're gonna hear both sounds. Suffers, surrender, submit. Same thing here, see how we have summit right here and submit right here? It's going on this prefix. Isn't that interesting? So it can go, this SUB can go on once it start with M, but also M's can go on once it start with M. So when you have the other prefixes, your B's, M's, and P's intermix. It's the same here they're kind of intermixing. They kind of stay in that same area. So just be careful with that and listen. So, okay, we have soup and soup. This is short for supervisor. And then we have soup. So sometimes you're going to have uh, that, that looks like soup or sup. You're gonna have words like this and you just need to be careful with them. Okay. Now, we have these words, these are Latin words with the Latin roots, with their Latin prefixes, and we have moved them into some chameleons, and we've talked about these today. So, let's look at them as we're putting them on other roots. So, ingest, what's up here that has the other chameleon? Suggest right? See how they, you, if you know how to spell your root, you know how to spell your prefix, then you're going to understand these a little bit better. How about impend? Do we have one up there? Nice. Right there. Suspend. Erupt. Do we have erupt up there? Nope. But we can do other things like erupt. Inverse. How about right here? Subversion, same thing. How about aggression, Paul? Uh, uh, Gress. Gress is your root. How about oppress? Press. Press. Press is your root. Here's your prefix. Here's your prefix. Addictive. Do we have addictive up there? Dict is your pref is your root. Nope. nope, it's not up here. But still. These will go and they will have other things. How about allowance? Lao. Lao. How? According. Cord. How about impending? Pen. Pend. Right there. Oppositional. Where's that one? Shun. Right there. Pose. How about irradiate? Eight. It's 
It's right there. Oh, yeah, this <laughs> so you have the double R, one's for the prefix and one's for the root. Now let's look at these. These are all Latin roots. Verse, port, ses, struct, fur, rupt, fect. What does verse mean? Okay, how about to turn around? Oh. So it's, uh, technically Daniel was right, because he's yeah. uh, going backwards. Yeah, you're turning around. Okay, how about port? That one's easy. Port. I never struggle to with transport. this one. No. no. But you think about to transport. Uh, to, what are you doing when you're transporting something? You're, to carry, you're to carry. carrying something. How about cess? Think of a word, success. Princess. Nope. Success. Think of success. Man. Yield. Yield. So what does yield mean? It means when you're yielding your crop. It means you are in abundance. So success, you're in abundance. Okay? Okay. So see how we had right there? Suck. Success. Struct. To build. To build. How about fur? We talked about that today. Transfer to carry. Okay, so there's two to carry. Yeah, and there's more than just these no. to carry. How about rupt? Rupt. We talked about Next that. Load. No. Break. I was technically right on. How about fact? Yeah. Fact. Effect. Uh, I don't know. Make. To make. Perfect. Or do. To, to change. Okay. That's kind of fun, huh? Let's let's work about those. Verse to turn around. Port to carry. Cess to, to yield. yield. Struct to, to build. build. Fur to carry. Rupt to break, fect, make or do. To make or do. Yeah, so when we look at ik, oftentimes we think ik as a suffix is Greek. Greeks hold their suffixes for ik, which means of or pertaining to, ethnic, atomic, metric, cyclic, cystic, pelvic, but this one is Latin. So this can fit in both sections, but you'll see them a lot in words. And we know that these, right, because of the Y in the middle, right there, it's harder with this one because what meter is both, right? Mm -hmm. So look at the word graphic. Now we know this right here is Greek. Why do we know that? The pH. So we know that this is a Greek word with its suffix, I see added on meaning of or pertaining to the graph. Okay? So let's use it in, in a sentence. The way they spoke was very graphic. You could see it. It's written down or, in your mind. Yeah. Or their drawing was very graphic. Yeah, exactly. So I actually thought this was really interesting, boys. So we have the O-P and the O-P-E-R. Can you get that in your mind? O-P and O-P-E-R. This, this prefix means work, okay? Opera, do you think those singers have to work hard at practicing? They sure do. How about operate? To be able to operate something, you have to work hard. Copy, look at that, OP. What happens when we copy things? You work. Did it, did it take me a lot of work to copy this down? It did. <laughs> this is a lot of work to put it in my notes, to write it on the board. When you're copying things, if you think about what they did with the Bible when uh, they copied it from so Latin to German to Greek, anyways, that takes work, and that is the reason why 
we have this. Now we have copy machines now, which made it a lot easier. But if you even think in the olden times when they made books and how hard it was to put all those letters in to make copy after copy, it was a lot of work to do that. Isn't that fun to think of that? Look about optimism. What does optimism mean? It means you're going to be positive. A pessimist is a negative thing. And it's easy to be negative and pessimistic. It just comes natural to the human being. But it takes work to be an optimistic person. Optimism. And look at that. It means work. It's not something that comes easy to most people. Most people are naturally go to pessimism. So this is in Old English and it falls in the Latin category. Okay, now I'm putting a homophone in here for you guys. And something that can get really confusable if you are not paying attention, let's say you say, I want the word magnet. And you look it up in the dictionary. It's easier to not make as a mistake right now as it was in the past when you were looking things up in the dictionary. But now that we have computers or we have our phones, it's not as hard, but this is a huge confusable. Now this can turn to schwa and it says magnet, or it could say magnate. And this is a person starting a business or industry and has become very rich and successful. That's what a magnate is. Now, for an example, in a sentence, we have the office of this magnate or magnet is on floor 102 of the edge. That's in New York. We're going to New York, so, and we're hopefully going to go into the edge. So anyways, I use that for in my sentence. But magnet, see how close they are in sound? Huge confusable. Do not get these words confused. They're completely different. They have very similar sounds. This you can hear et better, magnet, magnet. But when you're speaking fast, sometimes you can't hear the difference between the schwa sound or this s sound, okay? But this is something that can attract a person or a thing. So you pull out the magnet and you're going to attract the paper clips to your magnet. Um, how about, this is a, this is a sentence. The damaged fruit is a magnet for fruit flies. See how you have rotten fruit that is getting ripening, that it collects fruit flies and they're hard to get rid of. Okay, now if we look at ents, this is a suffix it's Latin, it means quality or action, and this ends, oftentimes you can hear ends, boys, but oftentimes it switches to schwa, and so it's very confusing. This is uns when it switches to schwa, and it's something in action, it's a quality of having, and it's a noun suffix when you add it on. So you can add them onto adjectives, you can add them onto verbs. They become nouns when you do that. Okay? Now, if you have A-N-C-E and E-N-C-E, they have the same meaning. Okay? But obviously they're spelt different. Now this one just turns to schwa. It's closed A, but this one, sometimes it turns to schwa. So it can be more difficult to spell. And you want to make sure you have the right one on there. This is the one used the most. But look at this. Okay, we have action in these words. Um, emergence, emergent. So E-N-C-E has words with E-N-T in them. Do you see that? Like evident, E-N-T, evidence. So that will help you with your spelling. Which one should I do? You can hear the evident in here really well. Evidence or evidence. So you can't hear it as much when you're adding on this suffix, but it'll help you spell if you're getting the correct one here. 
uh, different, difference. Obedient, see obedient, obedience. You can hear it here, but when you speak really fast, sometimes you can't hear that. It comes from modern English, it's borrowed from Latin, but let's look over here at the A-N-C-E. So see how we have adjectives, um, the A-N-T words or their verbs. So see how these, the E-N-T and the A-N-T right here, Daniel, do you see that? Mm -hmm. The E-N-T and the A-N-T, these are either adjectives or verbs. But when you put on your suffix, they become nouns. So it is evident. See how is evident is your verb. The evidence, now see how I put the in front of it? It has now changed to a noun. So you need to remember, it's going to move how it works and functions in your sentence. Okay, brilliant. So it's the same thing right here. Brilliant, this turned to schwa. Brilliance. So if you hear that, here you can hear the E in here, and here you can hear it turning to schwa. So this would be much harder to spell anyways. Okay, so now we've went over this already a little bit, and we have minute. It has two meanings. How do you say that? How, what are the two meanings and how do you say it? Minute. Minute, that is so minute. That problem is so minute that I do not know why you're fussing about it, you're worried about it. It's very small. And then what, then we have minute. It's time, exactly. It's one thing out of 60, right? It's very small. So I just wanted to reiterate that. What is minute? No matter which, which way you put it, it's going to mean very small. It has the same meaning. Okay, so we're gonna go over some dis, again, the dis section. We've already gone over that a little bit, but let's reiterate what we've gone over. Dis means what? Apart. Apart, disrupt. Now, these can be changed to nouns. So we're gonna disrupt. Rupt means to break, so you're going to break up the meeting. We're going to break up the meeting, disrupting the meeting. We're breaking it apart. We're breaking up the classroom. We're breaking apart the phone call. We're breaking apart the office by causing a disruption, all right? So when you add like T-I-O-N or disrupting, disrupted, disruptor, that turns it fully, full-blown noun, right? Disrupts. Disrupts. Oh, your plural S and puts it in. Yep. Okay, so now we have distract, dis. So we have dis which means a part in the word distract, which means to pull or to drag for tract. Okay, pull or to drag. So if you think about distract, when you're studying, being, you're being distracted, you're being pulled from your studying. You're, and this can go from a verb to a noun, depending on what you're putting on as your suffixes. Okay, you're being distracted from your driving, which causes accidents. You're being pulled or dragged apart from paying attention. How about exercising? You're being distracted from actually getting in and working and getting your body feeling better, right? So diff means apart, different. So like right here, we have ENT, and then what would we add on to here to make it say difference? E-N-C-E, right? Mm -hmm. This helps you know that. So difference, this word means to make something unpleasant much better. Now you can have it do other definitions, but I really like this definition of what a difference means 
differ means to make something unpleasant much better. Okay, now let's go in. We've gone through this a little bit, but we have by, which is Latin, which means to. You have die, could mean lots of things, but in here, if it's Greek, it means the, it means the number two. So, for instance, bicycle or bilingual or diphthong. See how they mean? They are two things. Now, try is either Latin or Greek. It's both. It means three. Tricycle, trilingual, trio. So, trio is both Latin and Greek. And Greek. Nice. Thanks, Dan. Okay, so let's look at this word. It's oligarchy. And what do you guys think? Is this Latin or Greek? Latin. No Greek. Latin. Oligarchy. Greek. This is Greek. Greek. See how it's saying arch? Arch means to rule. So oftentimes where you see arch, as in like the arch of your foot, you'll see them more related with... Um, simpler words like rainbow or um, the arch in the doorway. That's where you're, but you're going to see lots of Greek words with combinations of other Greek words right here. Does that make sense? This is a government. It's a government word. It's government controlled by a small group of people. It's ruled by following a path of powerful people few rule in an oligarchy. Owners control several businesses. They manipulate the economy to their advantage. They're very wealthy people that rule. Okay, these are a noun. Can you see that? Because they're a people. Um, so kind of like a king and a queen? No. Now that's a monarch. Oh. Or, um... Most of the time, if you have like a king, it would be a monarch. It's like mon means one. One person is ruling. Well, like a king and a queen. Right. But it's still a mar monarchy. It's like one family. This is a group of it's just rich people. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so, so there, this is a noun. And so if you want to refer it as one person... In oligarchy, it's called an oligarch. See how it's saying arc here. So you know that this is Greek and it's government. So what do you guys think? Are you for our oligarchy or against it? When, you, when we talked about that definition. Okay. So here's another dictionary word. Creed. So we have creed. This is Old English. It's a core that does not compromise your version of religious life to the Lord God. Creed means heart. And so oftentimes when you have, you look up creed, it is related to a, your religion, a specific religion, maybe, maybe not particularly your religion because the Jewish religion, they say they do not have a specific creed, but there are lots of religions that have a specific creed that they have. But I look at it as this is your heart and it's your version of religious life to your God. Okay. So that's kind of fun, huh? To know that that, what that means. We have log. It's Middle English in Latin. So like in mathematics or lumber. So L-O-G for, I want to cut a log to put in my fire. That would be this. There is log in mathematics. That would be Latin when it's in mathematics. I don't understand. So like a logarithm. So, so honey, right here, log is your root word. It is the core. 
and you're going to find that in here, okay? You're going to find that in other words, but you also have just log, cut it up, it's wood, it's lumber, throw it in, and you, you have the meaning of that log. Lagamo or logamo, depending on what it's going to be. It's related to log. It has the same meaning. It's in meadow and field, but they, they are, the meaning of that is meadow and field, but they, they fall in the same area. Now, let's talk about our roots. The root is introduced by its prefixes. The root ends with its suffixes, right? But the root is the most important part of the word. Now let's look at log. That means word. And this is when it is Greek. So here, when it's in mathematics and lumber, it's Latin. But here it is Greek. And this says logogryph. Can you guys pronounce that? So logogryph. And how do you know it's, um, it's Greek, Daniel? Uh, because there's a pH. Because of that pH. This right here. So you know that this word has something to do with word or to advise or to read. But it mostly when you just want a simple single word, it stands for word. So it's really important for you to have your classifications down so you're understanding, ooh, what does that mean? So if you see log and you have other things that identify that this is Greek, then you know that this has something to do with a word, with words or reading or something like that. Okay? So let's look at some more words, but we, I put them in sentences. The teenager performed a fantastic monologue in the second school play. So we're going to look, here's log right here, monologue. We know that this is Greek because mono means one, it's Greek. This means one person is performing in this school play, okay? Now, right now, in this is also falling in the French area, and if you take off Either way, if you take off the U-E, if you have log at the end like this, then it will be correct. So you could spell monologue, M-O-N-O-L-O-G, or L-O-G-U-E. Both are correct. So a few years ago, they started dropping the U-E to make it easier to spell. And they might just drop it all together sometime. The brothers were collogging with friends at school. So here is your root, that means word. So they were talking together. So that will help you understand this really confusing word that you really actually don't use very often in the English language. Do we use this very often? So this has everything to do with the word. That means they're speaking here. So even if you're not familiar with this word, because you're familiar with log and you know that it means word, then this will help you be able to understand what this word means. Daniel's favorite apologue is the fox and the crow. So an apologue is a story or a fable. And I don't know if that's his favorite, but that's one of my favorites, the fox and the crow. It's a fun, fun little story. But see, right here, it's a story written down about animals and stuff. It has something to do with the word. And you can take out the U-E. A-P-O-L-O-G is also the same spelling. They're not the same spelling, but you can take it out and it means the same thing. So here's some more words with log in them. Travel log. It also can be spelled without the U-E, travel log. Sinologue, it could be spelled without the U-E. Dialogue could also be spelled without the U-E. Prologue, same, no, you, you can spell it both ways. Analog, so you get rid of the U-E if you want to. This, this is more 
this is an older way of spelling it. This would be the newer way of spelling it. And an epilogue, and this would also be correct to get rid of that. So this also falls into the French language. It's coming out of Greek, meaning word. All right, I really hope you enjoyed that lesson and thanks, we- Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, bye. bye.